Welcome to the Rock is George podcast. I'm your host, George Dion. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to hit like, follow, or subscribe on the platform that you're listening to us on. You can also check out my work at the loudest.com on the planet, knac.com, for exclusive hard rock and heavy metal interviews, live show coverage, album reviews, and more. My guest for episode 186 is vocalist Jeff Scott Soto of the modern hard rock act, Art of Anarchy. For those unfamiliar, Art of Anarchy was founded in 2011 by the brothers John and Vince Vada. It also includes Ron Bumblefoot Thal, formerly of Guns N' Roses and Sons of Apollo. There's been a bit of musical chairs when it comes to the vocalist position in Art of Anarchy. For their self-titled debut in 2015, Stone Temple Pilots frontman Scott Weiland handled vocals. On their 2017 album, The Madness, Creed vocalist Scott Stapp handled the vocal duties. And here we are in 2024 with Jeff Scott Soto from Sons of Apollo, Trans-Siberian Orchestra, Talisman, Wet, and many other projects. The latest album by Art of Anarchy is called Let There Be Anarchy. And here's Jeff Scott Soto to tell you more about it. If I knew absolutely nothing about Art of Anarchy, how would you describe the band's music to me? It is a, a culmination of, well, especially with me in the band now, it's culmination of, I guess, a, a classic hard rock metal sound mixed with the, I don't want to say new metal, but it's it's certainly a contemporary sound. It's a, It definitely fits into the the early 2000s um, kind of vibe of when metal was kind of shifting, going from that classic sound like Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, and stuff like that, when the newer bands were coming out. So I think we it's got the crossover, the alternative metal, mix it with a little classic, and we and, and a lot of stuff in between, because when you have a uh, an alien in the band like Ron Bumblefoot Thal, you're bound to t- t- tap into other areas that nobody's tapped into before. So it's it's... It's a pretty cool, interesting uh, demographic in this band. Now, it was announced in September of 2023 that you were the new vocalist for the band. But from what I understand, you've been working with the band quietly since 2020. Uh, yeah, well, the, the whole idea came about during the lockdown. When, you know, we didn't know how long things were going to how long we were going to be at home, et cetera. And it was just a conversation catching up with Ron about future Sons of Apollo, what we're doing and all that. And I don't know, somewhere along the way, I guess we were, he was giving me an update on what was going on with the whole Art of Anarchy thing, which at that point was, you know, it was, it was gone. They they weren't going to continue. And I just, it, once again, as I told him in 2018, when it was first going down, I said, you know, what a pity. It's such a great band, that, such, such great songs. And I even blurted out back then and I blurted it out again. I was like, man, I would have loved to have heard what my voice would have sounded like on some of that stuff because it it's right up my alley. Even what I was doing with my band Soto, not the JSS stuff, but Soto was more like that. It had that kind of vibe and style. So that's really up my alley. And I just, man, it would be so cool to have some kind of uh, reference of what it would have sounded like me singing without me just singing one of their past songs that one of the other Scots had done. And um I think it was, I don't know if Ron called the brothers first or if he just said, dude, we're still writing. I can send you a couple of songs if you want to dabble. I mean, I don't know what we're going to do with this stuff, but he ended up sending me a few songs, sent them back. The the brothers, everybody, they were all, uh, they were all excited about what I was doing. And we just kept going and going, and going. Next thing you know, we had, I think we have like two albums worth of stuff done. And from that, it was, uh, you know, it was crunch time. It was like sometime last year, we said, guys, we, we got something here. Let's finally get this out. So it was about a, it was a matter of time. It was a matter of seeing where everybody was going and what was happening on the other fronts. And since there were no other fronts happening, it was the time to pull the trigger on this and uh, and see what what we could do with it. The, the difference between my involvement with this band, I don't know if it'll be part of uh, any of your inquiries, is the other two singers were brought in. They were basically not hired, but they were paid and brought in, to, asked to be a part of this. I am the one, the difference is I asked to be a part of this. I came into this thing saying, I don't want any money. I just want to, I want to work with you guys. I want to create this together. And and if it turns out that it fits, I want to be part of the reason why we can actually take it to the next step. 
Like that's a a pretty noble thing to do because if you check out the history of the band, it, it, not not great luck with past yeah. singers, and it, it seems like maybe because of what you mentioned, they were paid in advance to kind of be a part of it, and then they kind of flaked. And I brought that up to John uh, John Boda. I, I said exactly that. I said you guys deserve based on what I've heard, based on what I've seen, you guys deserve to get the recognition. This band deserves to get the recognition that you guys were going for and didn't get because of the other parameters. And from that, as I said, I want to be part of a situation where I'm helping push this thing forward, as opposed to they just hired another singer. If it works out, no, if it sticks, no, you know, we'll see if it works out. I'm, I'm doing this the same way I do my band Soto or sons of Apollo or anything else. I put, I'm all in, and as long as everybody else is all in, we might have something that we could resonate from here. And the result of all of this collaboration is your album, Let There Be Anarchy. It came out on February 16th through Pavement Entertainment. Uh, album, not so much a concept album, but kind of taken on the world in general and sort of a reflection of modern society, a little bit from the Book of Revelation. Am I a little close there? Absolutely. It's, it's kind of a... I look at it as it's the past and future. I mean, we, we're we're talking about what's going on presently, but we're taking things from revelations and, and what's happened in the past as far as the apocalypse of the time, sign of the times, but it's also going into the future. Where where are we going to end up with all of this that's going on? And and we're not the first ones to tap into this. You know, there are a lot of bands, concepts, et cetera, that have already done this kind of thing, but this is just our own rendition of it. And and we're just, we're playing with it in, in a sense of, truth and fiction you know it's 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 reality but it's also it's our own version of reality as well it could certainly be the soundtrack for where the world's going today uh absolutely the, one of your singles out now die hard you have a video that i think sets the tone for the for the, for the entire album if you want to talk a little bit about the song and the video as well well, yeah, and and that that song certainly is different. It's not it, it's not reminiscent really of anything they did on the the past records. Um, this is way more metal and more just intense. It's it's more drama. It's darker. It's it's got a, a just a different vibe overall, but it's still the same band. It still sounds like a representation of the band moving into the future, and that's what I mean. It's it's got more of a classic metal vibe on the on this particular song so that's why that's where the classic kind of steps in with some of the other stuff that we're, we're adding to it to make it more modern uh yeah and and it it certainly sets the pace it's not a radio friendly song at per se but that's not what we were going for we it, it, what a part of our bio is we don't want to we don't want to go by any rules we're going to make our own rules or break the rules that people expect us to, to play by and i'd rather do that than just you know paint you know connect the dots and paint by numbers so that's what we're doing with this. Let's talk about your other uh, video slash single, Vilified. Uh, you actually got uh, Oscar winner Cooper Gooding Jr. to be in the video. So if you want to talk a little bit about the song and then how Cuba came into the fold. Well, the, uh, the Cuba side was definitely, uh, it, it, I think it's from our director who works with, a, he does a lot of feature stuff. He does uh, movies and TV as well as music videos. So I think that was his connection. And there was, a, there was another well-known actor that was supposed to be up up in the running for the role. But uh, I'm so glad we got Cuba because he just, he nails it. He, without saying a word, you feel every essence of what his role is and what he's portraying in this video. And then, of course, we have Jeff Tate doing the narration in the video, which I didn't even know. <laughs> Nobody told me about this. I know Jeff pretty well. Uh, until the, the, the video came out, I'm like, I've heard this song a million times, never put his name or his image to the voice. I just thought they hired somebody with a really cool uh, narrative uh, kind of newscaster kind of voice. And then I, I see the video on YouTube. It was like narration by Jeff T. I'm like, get out of here. <laughs> so th just having these elements all combined and in, in taking it to the next step of just making a performance video. To me, it looks like a, looks like a movie soundtrack it, or it looks like a, a movie mixed in with one of our music videos together. And that's, that's the idea behind it. But obviously the message is the more is the stronger idea behind it is because the whole PTSD and, you know, mental health and all that, we, we really wanted that to resonate based on the fact that, uh, you know, that's what the song is about. The lyric is about being vilified for, for something that you, you became out of another circumstance, another situation, you know, in this case, it's Cuba coming back from possibly a war or a war situation. And, and he basically feels all alone and he's uh he's vilified for 
everybody thinks he's crazy because he came back a different person from where from when he left. And we've been we've been seeing a lot of that lately in our world Absolutely. between you know our veterans and sort of coming out of the pandemic, and it's certainly yeah. something to raise awareness of. One of the reasons, exactly what I was saying, it's it's a kind of a it's it's a past and a present thing, but it's more like what would what can we do about it in the future? Did you film any other music videos for future song releases? Yes, sir. We I actually just saw the the edit for one of them today. We we have to make our little notes and stuff. What we like, don't like, and uh, we have two more coming based on uh, what we filmed thus far. But uh, we also haven't ruled out if things continue to resonate and, and grow for us, we can go back and actually do a couple more. So, well, from this end, it looks like things are resonate res yeah resonating and <laughs> easy for you to say resonating and growing for you because i've seen the reviews of the album i've listened to the album it's a great album it seems that that people yeah. are buying in i hope i sure hope so and it's one of the reasons we didn't force a tour immediately we we have uh something like an eight or nine show run coming up in march and we just wanted to be we want to be smart about it we we know what we have here we know how we want to present it, but we also don't want to assume that just because we have a new album, the band is back, new singer and all that, that people want to come see us. I still have to I still have to make the their fans believe that I'm the right guy for them and, and that I'm the right choice to make helping the band move forward. But on the other hand, we have a whole new kind of fan base to build off this new version of the band at the same time. So it's not a given built in that oh, we have a new album, let's book a world tour and be out there for a year and then hope more than 50 people show up. <laughs> you mentioned the Let There Be Anarchy tour, March 22nd to March 31st, kicks off in <laughs> Saginaw, Michigan, runs through Michigan, Illinois, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Have you have you guys um, started rehearsals or are you going to go in cold? No, we're, we're going to start rehearsals uh, a few days before the, the shows start. Yeah, we everybody's doing their homework, getting ready for it and gearing up. And at the moment, we're just making sure we have all the, the equipment, all that stuff. And once that that's all aside and we know we don't have to worry about that, then we're going to get together and finally uh, see what our homework <laughs> results are. <laughs> see who gets the D and who gets the A. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the guy that's going to travel the most, right? Because you're over on the West Coast. Yeah, uh, I'm on the West and Tony Dickinson, our bass player, he's in Colorado. So he's the, he's the, uh, the mountain guy. Uh, but yeah, that's one of the reasons why we're starting and kind of staying within that parameter of the country. It's Tony and I can go out there. We can kind of get around without it being too crazy with the travel and uh, too costly, et cetera. And we're just going to we're going to get our feet wet and see where it goes. And Tony is also new to the group, uh, from what I understand. And he yeah. was he's in your Soto band as well, right? And Soto, he's the bass player for Trans Siberian Orchestra as well. So Tony and I are very well connected uh, prior to this. And it's one of the reasons I, I suggested we bring him in. I mean, I would have loved for John Moyer to stick with us because obviously I wanted to be the only new member in there and, and the band to continue as is. But I we all respect his decision to just stick with his uh, his duties with Disturbed. You know, he, he decided I'm going to put all my side things to rest and I'm just going to concentrate on Disturbed. And, you know, all, all the power to him. I love the guy and... Uh, and, but when it was when it was time to get a new guy in, I said, "Guys, I don't think we need to look any further. This is this is the the perfect person for us." And that's why I brought Tony in. Have you discussed what are you going to do as far as material in the live set? Are you going to do just Jeff Scott Soto, Art of Anarchy, or are you going to go back into the catalog? The band is the band. We're we're not going to pull the old Van Halen thing where the, the new singers or the, the present singers won't do the past material now we're we're going all in uh we're going to be doing stuff from both the first two albums as well as the, the lion's share of the set list will be from the new album any stuff from ron's other projects or your other projects no you know what we're going to concentrate on uh on getting this there's enough material now that's one of the one of the i guess the uh pitfalls of a a band going out for their first time with only one album under their belts. Even Sons of Apollo, we had that situation where we had to add other things to make us a show long enough that made sense. Even if you play the entire record, you still need to add some things. Uh, the, the band has three records now. We have a wealth of material to choose from to make a, a set list. So there's no need to dabble into any of our other personal things. We might throw a cover in there for fun once in a while or like a little smidge of something in between the, in between one of the songs or a breakdown or something. But for the most part, we don't need to go into mine or anybody else's catalog to make a set list. 
So with the announcement of you joining Art of Anarchy, it was kind of around the same time of the announcement that Mike Portnoy was returning to Dream Theater. So right. that led to the pretty much uh, end result of the breakup of Sons of Apollo. So was your participation in Art of Anarchy going to happen whether Sons of Apollo broke up or not? Well, it didn't result. Or it, it, there was no breakup or any. It, that's that's probably more of a, a fan or a, a, an, an outsider opinion because we never announced that the band's breaking up, the band is over, et cetera. Um, the band is certainly on ice at the moment. It's, it's certainly on hiatus. And especially, uh, I mean, I don't know how, personally, I don't know how, Sons of Apollo and Dream Theater can coexist at the same time just because they're too close. They're, relatably, they're too close. Uh, and even now, Bumblefoot's got a new band with the, with Derek Sherini and Dino Julusic, which is also very reminiscent of Sons of Apollo. So they're just all different entities. And and yes, we Ron and I did tell the guys in Sons of Apollo back in 2020 when we were starting to write together, we, we were honest and transparent about the fact that we're going to see what where this goes. We don't want to hide. We don't want to, you guys read it in the internet somewhere that we're working together and trying to resurrect this thing. So we told them we're going to do this. And this is before anybody knew anything about the whole dream theater changeover and all that. So we were going to do this regardless. That's, that's one of the things that we're known for, you know, Mike's in 50 bands. I'm in 50 bands. You know, it's, it's what we do. And all I knew is I wanted to stay in the same graces with uh, Bumblefoot into the future and Art of Anarchy happened to be a band that I really liked that he is part of. And those two worlds just basically came together. Is Art of Anarchy planning any live shows after this March block? Or are we going to see how the March block goes and go from there? Well, planning, yes, but there's nothing confirmed, nor are we, uh, we're, we're planning to do stuff. It's, it's kind of like, of course, I plan to wake up tomorrow, but <laughs> you just don't know. <laughs> and we're, we, it is a kind of wait and see. And, and it, again, it's something we discussed that we'd like to see things resonate first. We we want people we want to be in demand because if we go out there and force it, obviously the the conditions change based on you going out to say we want to play as opposed to we want you to play. So we want to we want to be in, kind of on the upper hand of that and knowing that there's a demand for us, people want to see us, and now we can actually make it happen the way we would want it to happen as opposed to saying well. We can't afford this. We can't do that. We let's just go out there and you know, and garage band it. I don't want to do that with this band. And you mentioned you guys are you're working musicians. You have other projects. I know that in your downtime from Art of Anarchy, you're going to be doing some two man shows with Jason Beeler again, like you did last year, right? Right. And that's that's something we've been working on for over five years now, and uh, we've we've built a nice little steady uh, stream of of consciousness behind it and uh, we're having it we're just having a blast with it and to me this is the kind of thing i love that we're doing because even at my age i i look at this as something i i would love to fall back on and if i'm not touring and doing the full-on rock and roll warrior thing anymore at some point in my life this is the kind of thing i can do into my twilight years and uh and so i'm having a blast with it and, and even the fact that we're building it the way we are but i'm also doing uh this is my 40-year anniversary being a, a singer you know i started with Ingvay malmstein in august of 1984 so i want to take advantage of this year as well to go out there and and do some legacy shows and, you know, do a set list that just involves all the, all the, uh, the, the kitchen sink, as I, as I like to say, of the JSS material. Well, for your 40th anniversary in music, you have some uh, shows planned. I believe it's South America with Spectra as your backing band. So that's kind of where you're going to start. Yeah, exactly. And I'm, I'm looking to hopefully get some European things. The U S has always been, it's a tough cookie to crack. I mean, I'm, the U.S. I, I got to say, Monsters of Rock Cruise is the closest, but it's not really U.S. But it's it comes from the U.S. But because there are a lot of people from different parts of the world, it's not really a U.S. show, so to speak. So we're going to debut it there, just get it started there, and then I'm I'm going to take it as far and as long as I possibly can, mixing in Jason and Art of Anarchy, and then ending the year with TSO as I always do. <laughs> Certainly enough to keep you busy. I saw you and Jason in Boston last year. It was a fantastic show. Just yeah. you two shooting the shit, taking uh, questions and answers and stuff like that. I'm I'm actually hoping to catch you again this year. It's a blast. Yeah, we'll be in uh, we'll be in Boston. I think it's April sixth coming up. So yeah, 
I, 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 I love the man. I've known him for almost as long as I've been doing this for a living. So it's uh it's a no brainer that we we end up doing something like this together. He's celebrating a milestone too. He's going out and doing 30th anniversary shows for uh, Saigon Water. Kicks Water release. Yeah, exactly. The first album he was the lead singer for. So yeah, it's um he's trying to kind of wash the whole idea of going back out of Saigon Kick. It, it was a lot of coercing and uh talking him into doing it. And so I think in the end when he does it, he's gonna be happy he did it. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh speaking of you and Jason, you guys were both in Talisman. And uh, Talisman recently released a song on the what would have been Marcel Jacobs' 60th birthday on January 30th. The name of the song is called Save Our Love. Uh, yeah. Kind of a callback to mental health awareness that you have with Art of Anarchy. Uh, you guys are urging people to uh, donate to the nonprofit Suicide Zero with the release of this song. So if you want to talk a little bit about the song and the organization uh, Suicide Zero. Well, yeah, I don't know so much about the organization because they're based out of Sweden. Uh, and obviously Talisman is, a, for the most part, a Swedish band. I'm the only non-Swede in, involved in terms of uh, the original history of the band. But um, it's uh, obviously anybody knows anything about Talisman or Marcel, they know that he took his own life. So this this one is more personal in terms of trying to get a message of what's going on with our soldiers or, or people dealing with PTSD, this is obviously a, a little more personal in ha us having to deal with our brother that took his own life. So obviously the song's not so much lyrically about that situation. We just, we just, we wanted to release it on what would have been his 60th as a tribute and homage to him. But obviously the proceeds, it's not about making money for us. We, they forget about it. Cause there's so many different levels of people saying, well, it's not Talisman without Marcel. It's not this, that, and the other. But you know what? In the end, what we do together, moving forward from from uh, what we did with Marcel, if we can do something to make awareness and even donate and and for the cause to for people that help other people, that's we'd rather do that than sit there and go count the little pennies. Okay, you get this, you get that. This just put it all in one pot and send it off. And that, that meant more to us than uh, than trying to, you know, prosper from it ourselves are you working on any solo material in your downtime at the moment no um uh, the new wet album is mixed and ready i don't know what month is going to be out this year but that's the closest to anything outside of art of anarchy that I, i've worked on i've done a lot of stuff like session stuff through the pandemic there was a lot of stuff that's coming out now based on the what i was doing to kill time and to kind of get through life back then but uh, there's a wealth of material that's that I'm sure it's got people going, oh, God, another release with this guy. Can he just stop? But, hey, you know, you said it earlier. We're, I'm a working musician. I got to make a living. And this is what I do for a living. I don't just do one album, one band, one tour. And, and that pays for my my annual bills and my monthly bills, et cetera. I got to do what I have to do to survive. I enjoy what I do. I never take it for granted. And. I just I try to at least keep the level of, of quality there. But more importantly, I try to do things that are not within the same wheelhouse, because then that would be not, not only overkill, but I I just be in uh, conflict with myself. So at least something like Art of Anarchy sounds totally different from Sons of Apollo, which sounds totally different from JSS, sounds totally different from Wet. So my voice gets to plant itself in all these little different fields, but they're not there's nothing similar about them. Does it get difficult kind of planning release dates for all these different things to make sure they don't walk on top of each other and you have different record labels involved and all that other stuff? Not difficult for me, difficult for them. <laughs> <laughs> well, if anything, you're honest. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I try I, from the, from the get, man, I, it's all about being candid and open and I'm an open book. Sometimes it gets me in trouble because people interpret it the wrong way. <laughs> Nah, as you, as, you know, it, they, they want to plenty interpret. of sites out there. Yeah, they love that clickbait stuff. <laughs> well, I don't think we gave them any clickbait today, but uh, we. Oh, have... believe me, there's always something in there. There's they'll always find something to 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 bag on, but it is what it is. The only thing, the only way to avoid it is just not to do any interviews at all, because you literally can anything you say can be misinterpreted or used as clickbait. It doesn't matter what it is. I can say, dude, I, what's what's going on with your hoodie there? And somebody would say. J JSS insults journalists about his hoodie. I'm like, I'm, I could be giving you a compliment, but that's not how it'll be taken. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, but you know what they say, you know, 
no, there's no such thing as bad publicity. They, yeah, <laughs> that's what they say. But nobody wants to be in the 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 crossfire of. I, that's not what I meant. That's not what I said. You know. Right. Anyways. <laughs> Well, Jeff, those are all the questions I have for you today. The new Art of Anarchy album is Let There Be Anarchy. It's out now through Pavement Entertainment. Another great album, and apparently there's a flood of Jeff Scott Soto material on the way. Yeah, I'm sorry, you guys. I apologize in advance. <laughs> it's all right, but eventually we're going to have not much to talk about. That's true. Uh, that's that's one thing you won't have to worry about with me. There's always going to be something to talk about, <laughs> good or bad. <laughs> All right, Jeff, I wish you the best of luck with everything. Hope to see you in Boston in April with Jason, and I'm sure we'll talk again in like two to three months. Thank you, my brother. Hope to see you soon. Once again, I want to thank Jeff Scott Soto of Art of Anarchy for coming on the Rock is George podcast. Be sure to check out their latest album, Let There Be Anarchy, out now through Pavement Entertainment. Head over to your favorite music streaming platform, take a listen to the album, if you like what you hear, buy a physical copy, support the artist. For all things Art of Anarchy, head over to their official Facebook page slash Art of Anarchy Band. For all things Jeff Scott Soto, head over to his official Facebook page slash Jeff Scott Soto. I also want to thank Barbara Papa George and Pavement Entertainment for making this interview possible. You've been great. I've been George Dion. Discover your next favorite artist on the Rock is George podcast.